Yeah, I'm going to review the 13th Reunion. This is a story from a TV show called Hammer House of Horror. It's from 1980. Now I think Hammer House of Horror is one of the best uh, horror TV shows. They did 13 stories that last 60 minutes. Proper scary. The, the, from Hammer Studios. This was after they finished doing films. They, they went on to TV shows. They made a really great job of this one. This isn't the first time Hammer did a TV show. In 1968, they did Journey to the Unknown. That lasted for 17 stories. And there were 60 minutes each. And then they also did a third TV show after Hammer House of Horror. It was called Hammer House of Mystery and Suspense. And this was in 1984. That lasted for 13 stories. And there were 70 minutes in length. But this one's the, the best of the TV shows they did. I remember watching it as a kid. This TV show. It was on, I think it was a Sunday. Because it was, yeah, it had been the day before school. And I remember watching it and being really scared. Scared by it. And when you went to school, all the kids were talking about what they'd watched the previous night. Another thing that I like about Ham House of Horror is the stories were shot on film. It doesn't look like a TV show really, it looks like mini films. So with it being shot on film you get all the grain and the shadow. But when uh, you see other TV shows, the, the same to use like studio kind of sets and cameras and it looks too bright. But in Ham House of Horror it looks like perfect, the film. Another interesting thing about the show, with it being Hammer Studios, there was a lot of people from behind the camera of the when they were making the films that were involved in this show. They had like Hammer directors and behind the scenes folk and also actors like Denno Elliott. He was in a Hammer film, so he's in the, he's in one of these stories. They even got the great Peter Cushion to be in the silent scream playing one of his last performances and he's excellent in that he plays a spooky shopkeeper there was lots of great hammer actors in this show so that makes it even more interesting the 13th reunions episode 2 it's directed by peter sazdier and he's done a lot of good films he directed hammers taste of bloody dracula countess dracula the hands of the ripper but he's more famous for his work on the stone tape that's a really scary one that I'll be reviewing shortly. The 13th Reunion stars Julia Foster as Ruth and it also guest stars Kevin Stoney as Jack Rothwell. James Cosmo has a funny part in it as well as a, an instructor. It's interesting Julia Foster was also in Doctor Who in Orphan 55 which I reviewed. She's an old woman in that. Tara was always shouting about Benny, Benny. Kevin Stoney was also in Doctor Who. He was in The Invasion and The Dalek Master Plan, which I've also reviewed. The plot of this story involves cannibalism. And that's kind of like a taboo subject. It's not usually covered in um, TV shows at the time. So the character of Ruth, she's like, writes for a, a women's newspaper. She's investigating this clinic where the, the bodies are vanishing. Because there's a person who works there who works in the mortuary and he tells her about what's happening. And he's wondering why all these bodies are vanishing. You realise you'll be committing a crime? Of course. I know the law. And that I'd be an accessory? Please yourself. I'll do it on my own if I have to. I'll bring some garlic. Dracula might try and turn us into the undead. Maybe it's Dracula. That doesn't sound so funny in here. So they investigate and they have a look in the, in the coffins and stuff and it's true the, the bodies are, are vanished. She's wondering where they're going to. And there's a great scene near the end, the third act's brilliant in this story, where she gets involved with this clinic. It, crashes dinner party that they're having and it turns out that the, um, the people who were at the dinner party the eating the bodies because they survived a plane crash years ago and all 13 of them are meet, meeting up every month to eat someone because that's how they survived the plane crash by eating the passengers and they've got a taste for the, the human mate. Well the papers said it was a miracle. The search parties had given up hope of finding anyone alive. They shouldn't have done. 
It's extraordinary how canny people can be when they're up against it. Hmm? The things they can bring themselves to do. James Cosmo is brilliant in this. He plays a PA instructor, calling the, the, the woman who's put a weight on. Like, really humiliates her in front of the other ones. Look at her, everybody. Isn't she fat? Isn't she ugly? Isn't she repulsive? You ought to be ashamed to be seen in public, Joyce. You should bury yourself up to the neck in sand. I know what it's like to try to lose weight. Some of my viewers might remember I used to do a series where I had to try to lose a pound a week. It was called humiliation. <laughs> I ended up feeling. So I know, I know what it's like. Fucking hell. Well, do something about it, you stupid cow! Hey, Phil, you should have had him as your fitness instructor. He would have told you you were a fat bugger. <laughs> What they're doing is they're making them chubby though. Hey, I would be safe. They can't eat me. The, the people who are at this health clinic, they're all overweight. They kill them off so that they've got more to eat. Hey, Phil, good job you weren't at that health clinic. They would have loved to rate you, you fat bugger. <laughs> It's interesting that Dracula's mentioned twice in this story as well. And he's in the title sequence. I, I love the title sequence, it really gets you into the mood. And also the music, it's really well done. I think Julia Foster was miscast in this story because um, she's supposed to be going to this like health clinic to lose weight. Because it's all these fatties who were going to this place to lose weight. But she's not fat. Like throughout the story, the, the like little references that she's chubby and fat, but she, she's not really, so she's kind of sort of like Miss Cast, really. And of course, there's a good damn um, final scene. Like, they tend to have like twist endings, these stories. The character of Ruth running through this mansion trying to get away from the cannibals. So, the character that James Cosmo's playing, the PA instructor, and he, he finds her, and right at the finish, he, he has a meat cleaver and he says, I was on that aeroplane too. Chop. <laughs> and that's how it finishes. A really good ending. James Cosmo has some brilliant lines though. Take your mind off your guts. <laughs> They're always away. I'm lonely. Well, do something about it, you stupid cow. <laughs> Start jogging. Start to crash a political party. Anything to take your mind off your guts. <laughs> Have you looked in the middle lately? So overall I thought this story was good. It's not one of the best ones. For that you, there's um, some brilliant stories in this show. Some of my favourite stories were The Silent Scream, Two Faces of Evil and Rude Awakening. But there's loads of other brilliant stories. So there's some brilliant stories in the House of Horror. So I'll have to get reviewing a few of them. So overall I think I did this story about a minute. Eight out of ten. Got a brilliant final act. What did you think, Bones? Did you like it? Ha <laughs> ha! Phil was more frightened than me when him being a fat bugger. Do you like looking so unattractive, Joyce? You enjoy making me unhappy. I'm not bloody fat. Disgust? I'm a fucking skeleton. Then what Piss off. So <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody, bye. See you next time. Bye. bye. Well.